What is going on, Box Bros? It is the Box Man here, and welcome to the very first episode of Star Wars Rants. This is going to be a very fun and loose series where I just rant about all things Star Wars. And what better topic to start with than the very first Star Wars game that I've ever played, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace for the PlayStation 1. Now, you know, I really feel like this game doesn't get the credit it deserves. I really think it's responsible for a lot of people getting into Star Wars, myself included. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't the first piece of Star Wars media that I've ever ingested, uh, as I did watch episodes 4 through 6 when I was a kid, but I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was, I was just watching, there were spaceships, you know, big black man with a fucking sword. What did he say? You know, I didn't know what the hell was going on, but I liked it. I was like, this is cool, this is pretty neat, and then episode episode one came out and that was when I was like okay we got something here like th this is good this is good and of course the game the game for the movie came out I had to get it I got it and what do you know it was fucking incredible now despite the clunky gameplay and less than ideal graphics what the hell am I looking at this game is actually a 10 out of 10 in my opinion big chunk of that's because of nostalgia but I'm telling you it's a hidden gem of a Star Wars game now, it's your basic hack and slash platformer, but it's even got a little bit of RPG elements thrown into it with some dialogue trees and even side quests. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, bet, I bet a lot of you didn't know that. You could do side quests in this fucking game. What can I do to help you? Can you help me get those thugs out of my house? I'm telling you, ahead of its time, this was something else. So yeah, this was the first Star Wars game I ever played, and it's really what catapulted me truly into the world of Star Wars gaming. Looking back, I can see a lot of influence from other Star Wars games that came before it, like the Dark Forces series. You know, how Obi-Wan just has a pistol for some reason in this game? So uncivilized. I mean, you could tell they were going for the whole Kyle Katarn type deal here. You could even throw thermal detonators. And I think at some point you even get like a fucking minigun or something. I mean, a Jedi with a minigun? You can play as all different characters too, not just Obi-Wan. You can play as Qui-Gon, uh, Princess Ama freaking Dala. She's not a princess. And my personal favorite, Captain fucking Panaka, boy. Oh, he lights bitches up on Coruscant. Don't fucking, don't, don't front, boys. He, my man Panaka gets shit done. The game's not very long, averaging around like 12 hours of gameplay, actually not even that, probably like 8, but nonetheless it's fun as hell. There were some levels that were pretty much like sandbox, you could just go around and do whatever the hell you want. Well, not entirely whatever you want, uh, sometimes if you want a little too off script they would uh, hit you with one of these. Jar Jar has been killed, what's he doing? Where is he? I don't even know where the fuck he is. I thought I told him to stay on the ship. The Moss Eisley level was the best, and everyone who knows this game and played this game knows what I'm talking about. It was pretty much Grand Theft Auto 3 before Grand Theft Auto 3 ever fucking came out, dude. You could go around as Qui-Gon and just murder the entire town. I mean, you could even murder Anakin's mom for God's sakes. I won't help a murderer like you. Anakin wasn't too happy about that. Eventually, you would get overwhelmed by the guards and, and killed, but it was just so much fun seeing just how far you could get killing everybody in Moss Esper. You could also do it in the Gungan level, but it wasn't quite as fun. And those Gungans really don't mess around. They could take quite a few hits, let me tell you. Oh my god, stop, he's already dead! And Jar Jar's just a class act in this game. He really takes the reins in the second level, guides you through the swamp, you know? I wish you could play as Jar Jar, now that would have been fucking cool, guys. Can you imagine running around Moss Espa as Jar Jar with a pistol? Somebody's gotta do a mod, you know? This is also one of the only games in existence where you can actually kill children. Kind of fucked up, honestly, but you could do it. Uh, again, you can even kill fucking Anakin as well. Aside from the deadly massacres you can go on in this game, some of the best features were the unique FMV cutscenes that they would play in between levels. Now you see, they could have went the real cheap route like most movie-based video games did back in the day and just showed scenes from the movie itself, but you know LucasArts always goes one step above. They did custom FMVs that are of course directly based on scenes from the movie. But I just think it's really neat how they just went all out and, and, and made these custom CGI effects for the game. 
It's really unique, and, you know, not a lot of people talk about it, so, you know, I'm talking about it right now. It's cool. I like it. Oh, my robot asshole, me. Now, I've been talking this game up quite a bit in the last couple minutes, but it's not quite as perfect uh, as I'm making it out to be. I know I said 10 out of 10, but if I had to critique it, here's the issues. One of them is, of course, something I already mentioned, the clunkiness. The controls could be a whole lot better in this game, but despite that, the combat is still pretty smooth. And it's so satisfying deflecting blaster bolts back at people. Oh my god, you see, I can't even, I can't even try to be negative about this game without talking it up some more. It's just, it's just so great. But another big problem is the AI. The AI in this game is re uh, <clears throat> Um, very not smart. Very not smart. You're stepping on my dress. I mean, I can't tell you how many times Padme just runs off, gets herself killed on the feed level, and then you gotta start all over again. Of course, not every level is there an escort mission or something where you gotta rely on the AI, but whenever it does come up, it's pretty damn annoying. And like I said, those dreaded text boxes where the AIs just go off and get killed for some reason are the worst. It really restricts you on, like, what you can do. Like, what's the point of making a game kind of like a sandbox on some levels, where then if you go too far into the sandbox, you get punished for it? Now, this is a game where you can save at any point, which is pretty fucking cool, and you should definitely use that to your advantage. Like, literally, the only reason I had to start all over levels again was because I just forgot to save. <laughs> but, this can cause problems. As many times as a kid, I would save right before one of those dreaded text boxes would appear. And, yeah, I would softlock my entire save file. I can't tell you how many times I had to start over an entire level just because of this. This game literally taught me to have multiple save files so I would never run into this problem again. Another big issue is kind of with the RPG elements. This is more of a nitpick, but it's kind of pointless. Like, whatever you pick in these options, it, it really doesn't matter for the most part. There's a few side quests where it makes a difference, but 99% of the time, whatever you choose, it just doesn't matter. It's just, it's just for the illusion of choice, you know? I mean, a lot of RPGs and older games are guilty of this, so it's, it's nothing to really complain about. Like I said, it's a nitpick, but, you know, thought I'd throw that in there too. Some of the level designs could be better as well. Th there are plenty of times where you just don't really know what to do, you know? You gotta just kinda figure it out. Which isn't a problem if you had game FAQs back in the frickin' day like I did. But I can't imagine the struggle those poor internetless kids went through back in the day while playing this game. Have fun trying to figure out how to open this freaking door. I swear to God, when I was a kid, I tried to figure this out for three hours before I caved and then looked it up online. And yeah, it's just a lever that's in a, that's in a room not too far. It's just that the entrance is kind of... Uh, I don't know, it's like I didn't even notice it. It's just older game problems, you know, nothing too serious. Like I said, this game is a bona fide 10 out of 10, though. I remember the droidicas, I used to think they were so freaking cool in this game. They're also extremely difficult to fight. The best way to beat them is the same way you beat them in almost every game they appear in. Just rush them, get behind them, and start swinging. <laughs> now the boss fights in this game are pretty tough, but nothing beats the final boss. Yeah, Darth Maul himself. It is insanely difficult. No joke, uh, he's one of the hardest bosses I've ever had to deal with in a Star Wars game. <laughs> Go back, guys, and see my live stream series of this game. It's actually one of the first live stream series I ever did. Series? Is that really a fucking word, Ragebox? Anyway, one of the first I ever did, and I had to use a crazy cheese method to beat him. How did that hit me? Wait, no, I was behind cover! It was nuts. And I almost softlocked myself in the level, too, because I was in a position where he kept killing me over and over again if I peeked my head out in a certain way. So I had to jump and shoot him. Oh my god, it was terrible, guys. I had to keep jumping and keep shooting in order to... And eventually, it took a long time, but eventually I beat him. Uh, but I saved right before that, so I had, like, no other choice but to do that. It was either that or restart the whole level, and I was like... No fucking way I'm doing that. So, it's just, you can literally go watch it. It's embarrassing, but but check it out. I'll probably stream this game again for the official Star Wars Wednesdays, you know, because back then it wasn't Star Wars Wednesdays. I was just streaming it. Actually, I think it was for PlayStation Saturdays. Now, that might have even been before PlayStation Saturdays. 
I don't know. Either way, Darth Maul's hard as hell. He, he's no joke. And, and you know what? He's no joke in just about any Phantom Menace game he's in. Because in Jedi Power Battles, I almost lost my frickin' shit fighting him. Even Roger couldn't beat his ass. So yeah, don't underestimate this game because it will give you a good challenge. But all in all, I love this game. It's, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart, boys. One more thing I gotta comment on is is just one of the funniest things that, that ever happened to me in this game. And again, it's in the stream series, so you can go watch it. But it's just, it's it, it's the funky dialogue like this that really makes this game such a gem. So as you're leaving Moss Espa uh, as Qui-Gon, you know, at the end, you get the, you get the hyperdrive, you tell you tell Watto to go fuck off. And then, and then you're leaving with the kid that you kidnapped into your cultish order, you know? You're leaving, everybody's saying goodbye, you can like literally go up to people, click on them, and they say like goodbye. And throughout the, uh, the level of Moss Espa, th there's always been this guy. This fucking guy. And every time you click on him, he says this. I want nothing to do with you! Like, jeez, buddy, like, he really just don't want nothing to do with us. That's okay, you know, I respect it. I mean, I did go on a massacre many, many times in this level, so, I mean, <laughs> can you blame him? But he's there to, to see you off, like, with everybody else waving goodbye. I mean, he's not waving goodbye, but he's there. So I'm like, oh, did he, did he turn over a new leaf? Does he like me now suddenly? I click on him and... I want nothing to do with you! <laughs> okay! <laughs> it's like, why is he even there to see me off then? <laughs> if he still wants nothing to do with me. <laughs> I don't know. I just... I found it to be so freaking funny, dude. <laughs> and it's just... It, it's it's the quirky dialogue like that in this game. That's, it's just so... It's so good. It's so freaking good. If you haven't played this yet, guys... Uh, play it. It's a, it's it's a hidden gem of an old school Star Wars game. Definitely does the Phantom Menace justice, in my opinion. I really do think that, and, and this is this is gonna be crazy, okay? This and it's not gonna happen. But I think they should do a fucking remake of this game. Oh my god! Come on, guys, a remake of the Episode One Phantom Menace game. Whoo, that would be amazing. I mean, it won't ever happen, but that would be so cool, dude. <laughs> Even a graphical update, like like something. That'd be that'd be cool. Just a remaster. I don't know. Anyway, there's my first rant. Uh, as you guys can tell, I'm pretty passionate about it. I mean, it's not Kotar levels of passionate, but, but you know, it's, it's, it's up there. It's up there. You know, Kotar, that might be a good one to do next. Yeah, that, that could be the next rant. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments what rant you want me to do next. Because, you know, I could talk Star Wars. I'm, if you've seen the podcast, you guys know I could talk Star Wars for hours and hours, so... Let me know below uh, what you guys want me to rant about next. And tell me if you even like this series idea. Is it a little too unhinged? Is it too off the wall for you guys? Let me know below, please. You know, leave the like, guys. Just hit it. It takes less than one calorie to hit the like button, boys. It takes less than one calorie. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just, you, you can do whatever you want. I love you guys. All right. Until next time, the Boxman will catch y'all later.